Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I hope everyone is having a happy Halloween. I'm going to take a second and load our comments and our video. Here we go. I'll give everyone a minute to come in. And tonight we're doing something super fun. Hi, Trish. Thanks for joining. We are going to create a mixed media piece using Tim Holtz Colorize Dye Arthur. And he is super cute. I love how angry his face is. <laughs> he is like the epitome of Halloween. So I have him here and I have die cut him. So I have all his tiny little pieces all here and I'm going to move them over to this side of my mat while I'm waiting for everyone to come in. So I've got his tree branch, his body, this part here, and all his tiny little pieces. And here I have his little face. I'll move that here. I have his face and his other eyes. There we go. And these are his claws and his feet. The other part of his eye. Here we go. And his body is over here. I just don't want to knock anything down and I don't want to lose anything. And all these tiny, tiny, tiny little details, they're all here, making sure I'm not knocking anything down. And we're going to work on this portion of our mat. Hi, Lori. Thanks for joining. So I'm super excited. And I have a new product, guys, and I wanted to demo these special tonight. And these are just Tim Holtz Distress Mica Stains. These are really hard to find. And I managed to um, get the Halloween set. I was not able to get the holiday or the Chris like the Christmas set, the two Christmas sets, but I was able to get the two Halloween sets. So these are, um, the first set has um, Jack-O-Lantern. It has Empty Tomb, Flickering Candle. And this set has Bubbling Cauldron, Crooked Broomstick, and Hocus Pocus. So I'm really excited, guys. So we're going to crack these open for the first time tonight. I, as you can see, I haven't even used them yet. So I'm really, really excited to play with these and see how they work. Because not only are they inks, but they're all infused with, um, with mica. So they're going to give me all kinds of um, metallic, like a metallic look. I have his other ones, his um, mica sprays. And those are basically um, like a clear liquid in them and then they have the mica in them so basically they go on like a shimmer they don't go on with um, a pigment ink so they are different from these and I have those over here and I can pull them out um, yeah um, brushed pewter so as you can see they're like a clear liquid but they have um, the mica in them so when you spray these ones, they just give you like that shimmer. So that's this other set. And they're the same size, if you guys can see. Um, there's, this was also a set of three. And these are Tarnished Brass Antique Bronze and Brushed Pewter. So I do have those ones. But I'm really excited to try the new Halloween sets. So basically, I've cut myself down a little 5 by 7 um, piece of cardstock. I use 110 pound Nina. And we're going to get right into it. And I'm also going to grab my Distress Oxide sprays. Because I can kind of use those as a base. And then I can work with the mica stains with it. So I'm really excited to try these guys. I hope everyone had a fun Halloween today. We had a really good day. We um, carved a pumpkin with our kids. We watched the movies that were age appropriate for the kids, of course. So we watched like Hocus Pocus and some of the Disney Halloween specials. And the kids really enjoyed that. 
and we bought them a ton of candy, but we didn't end up taking them trick-or-treating tonight. Unfortunately, our weather here was horrendous. It was raining all day, and it, the weather was terrible, and we don't want to get have the kids get sick. Oh, I do have Mermaid Lagoon. Um, oh, and I have... Sorry, guys, I'm reaching way over there. Hi, Karen. Thanks for joining, love. And I have Spice Marmalade. Here we go. So I just wanted to put some... And I crackling campfire too. I don't think we'll use that one. That's more for a fall thing. But I have here black soot, dusty concord, mermaid lagoon, and chip sapphire. So just to show you guys a size comparison, that's to compare a distress oxide spray or distress spray stain to the new mica spray stains. So the bottles are a bit smaller. But again, these were one and done, guys, so I'm pretty sure most places now are out of stock of these, unfortunately, and I was just really lucky to be able to find some. So I want to do like a combination of things, and I'm going to grab my heat tool. I have that handy right here. Here we go. I want to make sure I'm in focus so I can move some stuff back and over. Sorry, guys. Here we go. Just don't want to obscure my view, and I want you guys to be able to see exactly what I'm doing. There we go. That should be good focus here. And so the first thing we're going to do is create our background. So I can come in with... And what I like to do, too, is start out with my light colors. So maybe... And I want to make sure that I have a really good, really good shake so that everything's all mixed. And then when I come in, I want to do like a motion like this, like Tim says, so you're not bullseyeing it. So just like a motion like that, where I'm just, there we go, that's good. And then I want to try flickering candle. So I have a little bit of spiced marmalade there. Sorry, guys, I probably should have opened these ahead of time, but I haven't opened them yet. That's okay. We just have to open up each one and give them a really good shake. And I want to see how these are all going to play with my Distress Oxide sprays. I love the sprays. They're one of my favorite things. And these are also water reactive. Here we go. There we go. So I'm going to give this a really good shake. And I want to make sure all my mecha is off the bottom. And same thing, I'm going to give it like a, a flickering motion, so I want to come kind of this way, here. Oh, I love that with the mica. If you guys can see that, I'm just going to do one of these and kind of let it bleed. Oh, is that ever beautiful? If you guys can see that. I can see all the shimmering gold all in there. Hi, Tammy. Thanks for joining, love. Yeah, I told the girls I probably wasn't going to be able to go live um, a couple hours ago. We're having problems with our internet because it's rainy and it's awful here with the wind and the awful weather. And um, But nope, my husband rebooted the router and it's perfect. So I'm really excited. I was like, no, because I had to cancel on Friday because our, our power went out. We get really, really bad windstorms here that come in off of um, the bay. There we go. So I want to make sure that I have a really good... Oh, do I ever love that color too? So 
So I like to do my, my lightest colors first and then start going darker. And that's kind of how I paint too, guys. I do like with oil. Well, it doesn't matter with oils, but it matters with um, watercolor and acrylic painting. You do your lights first. So that's kind of like one of those habits that I just always, always do. And maybe we'll come up the side right along here with some jack-o'-lantern. The orange. Let's splatter it just a bit. Oh, I love that. Here we go. And I'm going to do one of these. And I want to add in some... Oxide spray. Okay, I use spice marmalade. Fossilized amber. Here it is. I'm like, where did it go? <laughs> it's here. And I'm going to come closer to the top with this fossilized amber. Here we go. There we go, right like that. And then I can come in with my purples. Here's my dusty concord. And I think I, and then what I like to do too, guys, I kind of like to move things around. There we go, kind of like that. And I can come in with the dusty concord right up the side like this. Make sure that's all mixed. There we go. I can kind of, there we go, perfect. And then, oh, that's gray. Hocus Pocus, this is a metallic purple. Um, but I don't want to do that too much because I want to do Arthur in lots of purples. So we're going to kind of refrain, I guess, from that. Let's do some bubbling cauldron. This is a green, metallic green. Can do that in the corner. It's going to be like our super fun background. There we go. Sorry guys, some of these are stubborn. Yeah, don't want to unscrew the lid, that would be really bad. Here we go. So again, we're going to flip it this way. Leave a little purple in there. And I've got Bubbling Cauldron right in the corner. And you know what? That kind of looks realistic for the bottom. Yeah, we're just going to kind of... There we go. We've got that for the bottom. Because he is going to be sitting on a branch. And then maybe add some... Some blue. Um, do we have blue? Crooked Broomstick, Bubbling Cauldron, Jack-O-Lantern, Flickering Candle, and I'm going to want this one too, Hocus Pocus. So I'm going to open this one too. But I want to use this on Arthur, so I'm going to do him in like purples. Here we go. And I'll show you how I like to do the die cuts, too. Because I basically watercolor them. And this is a great way just to make a background. Sorry, guys, this is taking a really long time to open everything. But I kind of wanted to unbox them live.
Just they have really stubborn packaging. There we go. Perfect. So I have that one ready for Arthur. Same with I have um, Dusty Concord. And I have um, Picked Raspberry. And let's add something dark up at the top in the corner. Let's add some Chip Sapphire. Just to... And that's what we're going to do here. Just to create the effect that... So that's kind of like moonlight coming in, the green from the background, maybe some trees. It just kind of gives that illusion. And this can be like... I'll move it this way. Our dark sky. Yeah, there we go. Across the top. Perfect. With our moon coming in. And then as Tim showed too, um, I can always take my paper towel and spray some water to make it oxide oxidize there we go and I can pick it up beautiful and now I can I have the effect but I can really see that gold coming through if you guys can see that I'm really happy with that so I have a nice mixed media background and again I've got all kinds of it here so I can come in I can add a little bit of water. I want some more greens probably in the middle. So I can come in and pick that up. Here we go. Right like that. And in here. Come in and pick that up. Over here. And I'm going to dry it. There we go. That is an awesome background. If you guys can see it's dark it has all kinds of contrasting colors and we can put this aside to fully dry and this is where Arthur's gonna sit when we're all done so basically I just want to put this to the side now that we've created our background right beside me I'm gonna move all that plastic into my garbage for now here we go I want to come in with my watercolor brush and I have all kinds of stuff in front of me, but I also have my, my inks and oxides, so I can um, keep adding to my palette as we go. And I decide to do different things. So um, do we want to have any blue? I don't think so. But what I do want to do, so if you guys can see these, these are, actually, you know what? Let's give this area here a good wipe. Here we go, just so we're not contaminating. There we go, and keep everything kind of on that um, white portion of the mat. Here we go. I got a little bit on Arthur, but that's no big deal, because we're just going to keep adding more pigment. So basically for this, these are the two pieces that are going to go together, and they're going to make up the tree branch that he's sitting on. And yeah, it's this way, right? like this. So this kind of gives us an idea too as we go what kind of effects we're going to get. So I want to do the the top something that pops and the bottom something that's kind of more flat. So I can take my um, my vintage photo. Um, so here I have um, yeah, vintage photo not inspired brick antique linen Oh, right here, vintage photo. So we're going to take the big one and we'll do vintage photo. And I can spray it, or guys, I can just do one of these. I can come in with my ink like this. And this is just distress ink. And I can pick it up with my water brush like this. And I can literally start. There we go. And make like a nice wash for across here. 
because this is going to be my background. So this is going to be what sits on the bottom. Because I want something kind of dark that's just going to be matte at the bottom. And then I want to add the, um, the mica to the one that's going to sit on top. Crooked broomstick. So I'm going to add that to the one that sits on top because it's going to pop. Or this is just going to kind of be kind of matte. And if I want it to contrast maybe a little bit. So it's just basically adding a wash. So if I want to add a wash to something, I just take my pigment, put it down, and then I add water to it just to create this like this, this kind of wash. But then I want to give it a little bit of depth. So I'm going to come in with some walnut stain because that's really dark. So just right here beside it, I can pop. And I just did it on the side of my mat. Sorry, guys, I'm probably out of focus. Same with this. You guys have to see what I'm doing. Here. There we go. That's better. Sorry, guys. Just keep telling me, Fifi, move up. <laughs> and then I can add, like, a little bit of contrast here. And, like, where it's going to pop. A little bit of contrast here. A little bit of contrast here. And anywhere that I feel like... We want a little bit more something. Here we go. And I didn't treat this with anything. I'm using Distress Oxides and my inks and my uh, oxide sprays. And I'm also using the new um, Tim Holtz Distress. Mica stains. So now I can put this aside. So I've kind of created something that looks very matte. And I've got some light and some dark areas, and that's exactly what I was going for, for the dark stick at the back. And this one here, and again, just wipe it up so I have a nice clean surface area so nothing's being contaminated. And then I can come in for Crooked Broomstick. And this is going to give me like a brown, bronzy kind of color. Sorry, guys, last one to open. There we go. They're stubborn. Come on. I can get it to the halfway point, and it's like, it just doesn't want to come off. I have my scissors here. There we go. Here we go. I'm not sure what happened there. Did my lid come off? If you guys can see that, not good. I think my lid came off or it got stuck. Ah, it's all over me. Hang on. No, I shouldn't have to do that. It is, it's like everywhere. Okay. That's okay, I've got water, paper towels. It's not down the front of me, so we're okay. Yeah, I gotta be careful that the lids don't come off when you're trying to open it. Here we go. I'm trying to get that plastic all off of here. If you guys can see that, it's stuck. Ouch. I have to go that way and hope for the best. Holy, that was stubborn. Did you guys see that? How stubborn that is to get off? Oh my goodness. It's like the bottom came up and then the rest of it just did not want to. There we go. There we go. Now I can give that a good shake. Now that I'm covered, <laughs> my lid kind of 
came off. Oh, I was trying to take the packaging off. There we go. I want to make sure it's all nice and... Yeah, it's leaking. I don't know why. My lid's on tight. Huh. Okay, I'm going to give that just a bit. There we go. And again, I'm going to make sure that my brush is dry. And then I can come into my Crooked Broomstick. And I can just keep applying. If you guys can see. So if you if you spray it and you don't really get it exactly where you want it, you can always do one of these with your water brush. And this is just a little something that I do. It's going a little thicker than what it is. There we go. And I'm going to put that aside to dry. Right over here. There we go. But what I want to do is I want to come in with a tag and I want to pick that up. So the best way is to take a mixed media tag and I'm going to give it a light spray. So I just misted it. If you guys can see, light mist. And I'm going to come in and pick that up. So that's just a great way of picking up what you have here without wasting it or wiping it up and tossing it aside. Because that's the only um, thing I'm going to use that for tonight is my, is my um, sticks for Arthur. There we go. So I've picked some up. I'm not too worried about what it looks like because that's just layer one. It's just so that I'm not essentially wasting it. My hands look awful. It literally opened, guys, when I was trying to open the, the packaging. So I'm just going to see if I can't get some of that off me. Sorry, guys. That was, like, haphazard. There. Yeah, <laughs> I'm stained. That's okay. All right, new paper towel. Okay, now we can get right into doing Arthur. So I have this little palette beside me, so I'm all right with that. I just want to get rid of this crooked broomstick that went everywhere. There we go. And I'm going to grab Arthur and I want to completely spray this in my dusty Concord. There like that. Give him a nice coat and again I can come in with my water brush and kind of blend it out just a little bit so I don't have like too many actual splatters. So if splatters isn't really what you're going for, you can always just... I am, I don't mind in some areas, but in some, like the details here and along here. I love this color. It is a blue-purple. Here we go. And I'm adding water so it's going to oxidize. There we go. And I'm going to put that one aside. And any of the elements that I feel like I want to have a little bit darker. Um, so if we take a look at what Arthur looks like, it is here. So I've essentially done the body portion of him in the spray. And then we have all these little layers and pieces here that we can watercolor. And I want to do them in Crooked Broomstick. Or sorry, um, Hocus Pocus. That beautiful, vibrant color. So now I'm going to take this one and do the same thing. Oh, I want to mix my mica better. i to make sure it's really... There we go. 
have a good bullseye there. And same thing, I can come in and so like these um, elements here, I can come right in here and just, yep. You can do a motion like that. I can come in with the water brush, pick it up and move it around. And I'm loving how metallic that is. It's a beautiful color. There we go. I'm going to put each of my pieces over here to dry. And it's not going to take very long to dry. And the same thing here. And then I can do the same thing where I'm pulling it into both the mica and the um, oxide spray. So I get something that's kind of in between. And that is really fun too. So now I'm going to get like a multi, a multicolor one here. This one here is his tail. And I want some more. I want this one to be darker. So if I feel like I want it to be darker, I'm just going to come in. And there we go. Again, I just want to move that around just a little bit so I have more of an even coverage. So don't feel like if, if you spray it and it's not exactly where you want it, just come in with your water brush and just move it around a little bit. That's what I do with my sprays. I just love that. If you guys can see that, it's really metallic. And the same thing with his eyes. And I want a clean spot right here. Here we go, so you guys can see. And I'm going to come in with the purple. here and the purple right here oh thanks Rita thanks for joining hi Becky hi Elizabeth thanks for joining Hi, Paula. Thanks for joining, love. This is super fun. And I haven't used Arthur yet, and I haven't used um, my Distress Spray Stains. So I'm super excited that I was able to come live on Halloween and show you guys how to use them. Because unfortunately on Friday, my power went out. There we go. And I have something nice and gold for his beak. So if you guys can see that, and then by the time I get each little piece done, we're going to be dry. And I didn't treat these with anything, guys. This is 110 pound Nina. And this is just how I like to do it. And I make it a mess of my glass media mat. And then the whole thing wipes up with water when I'm done. So for this one, I wanted a little lighter. So I'm just going to come into the pure oxide sprays over here. Oh, I think I had some yellow one here. That's okay. That's all right. Maybe just a little lighter then. I come in and pick that up and just make sure I get all in there. And do some watercoloring. There we go. Because I want some contrast, I want some lighter pieces, and then I want some darker pieces. So that's that here. And this one here I want a little darker. And I'm actually thinking to pick up a little bit of my um, uh, spray that's over here in the corner, the blue. And maybe just add, if you guys can see, just like this. And just add some element like that. And then blend it in with the purple. So that's kind of how I like to blend it, if you guys can see that. So I get something that still has the same kind of texture and color, but it has that little bit of contrast from the blue. There we go. And if you don't feel like it blended well enough, you just come in with some more blue and just, there we go. Just blend it a little better. 
or you can mix the two colors to get something in between. That's another fun way. So see, so then when I put these together, I'm going to have a little bit of a contrast. If you guys can, no, you can't see that because I'm way down here. Here we go. When I put these two pieces together, it's going to have a little bit of contrast. All right, same thing here. This is his tail. I want this really purple. The crooked broomstick. These are kind of like accent pieces. Here we go. I am loving the purple. So I didn't do too much purple in the background because he's going to stand out. I did some of the other colors. And I'll show you too because there's a couple of spots that look muddy and I'll show you how to fix that once we get these all done we'll go back over and do the um, like the refined details of of that and I feel like I want some more um, hocus pocus down here we go oh I'm leaking right here there we go just want to bullseye it there we go perfect so I want to come in um, this one goes this way. I want to, these are his eyebrows. There we go. One. I'm covered and that's okay. To me, if you're not covered in your mixed media stuff, you're not having fun. And it all comes off with some soap and water. Just don't leave it on for a really long time. <laughs> or it won't and you'll be stained for a couple of days. But that's no big deal. These are all accent pieces, so I want them really purple and shiny. I'm loving this metallic color. It's just beautiful. Purple's one of my favorite colors, so I'm an absolute sucker for this color. And I like that crooked broomstick, too. The golds and the bronze and the golds are my thing, too. I really love them. Um, His eyes. I'm thinking to do something darker. Like... They're going to go on top. Um, let me see here. And then his little pupils. So I'm, they're showing it, these ones to be, okay, we can do that, where these are gold. Where we can kind of go by his colors kind of thing. Yeah, we can do these gold in here. Here we go. So I hope you guys can see, I keep pulling everything towards me. Here we go. Gold. One. And two, these are his eyes. There we go. Yeah, I need to come up. Sorry, guys. Or maybe I can tell me if that's better. I've adjusted that a little bit. There we go. Now you guys can see what I'm doing. I, yeah, it's my camera, guys. i got to get this right. I have a hard time with that. It's a struggle. There we go. There. So now when I'm pulling stuff down here towards me, you can still see what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'll get this eventually. And even just one of these with these tiny little pieces. And then you just come in. So I've gone in with the oxide spray. Did a swoosh. And then took my mica. And just added a little detail. Because that mica ink is just going to pop. If you guys can see that. So I just like to, these are his feet, so I want to give them just, so I've gone, taken this, gone into here, given it a little swoosh like this, into the color, come up, and added Hocus Pocus as an accent over top. So I'm getting something between Hocus Pocus and my Distress Oxide Spray in Dusty Concord. 
And I'm thinking the same thing with him, too. Let's give this just a little something. Because he's got all this accent here. Right like that. And right like this. And I can do it like that, or I can exaggerate it. However we kind of want. There we go. Just like that. And we again have these little bits and pieces. I'm not too worried. They're just all going to become like this pinky color. I'm not sure. I think these are just bits. But these are definitely part of him. So like this one's going to be. Yeah, that one. That one's going to be like a lighter. Well, lighter kind of color. There we go. Because those accent his forehead. I want them just a little lighter. Same with this one. These are going to accent. Yeah, his eyes. See, we want those really light. These two little ones here. This one here is going to accent the top of his head. So let's do this one in... Focus, focus. His feet. Again, we're going to do it light. This deconcord color. And for most of these, except this, this is his beak. We're going to do this one in orange. I'll have to put some more orange down. But I'm going to set that aside here. But all these little ones right over here. We're just going to come in here like this. And this is why I love working on the Mac guys. Because you can make a mess. And you can accent your die cuts and your pieces. Oh, those are eyes. I shouldn't have done that. Those have to be something else, too. Hold on. That's okay. And is that part of his beak or his feet? I think that's the other part of his beak. Yeah, those are the two pieces. There we go. Sometimes it just takes a minute to kind of figure this all out. And I think these are, too. These are his black pupils and his eyes right here. Okay, I'm just looking at the picture to kind of determine what we're doing. All right, so I'm going to need black soot. So now I've pretty much done all the pieces for his body, and I still have some more of this, so I can just kind of come in and add some more details to him here. Or I can even, I can take him, spritz him up. And run them through my purple. Right like that, if you guys can see. And pick up that mica. There we go. Perfect. Now I can give this a dry spot. And then he can sit to dry. And then I want to come in with black soot. And I want to use oxide. So I make sure that it's going to be on there really good, and it's going to pop. There, my water here. There we go. And these here, right here, are his eyes. So these are black. These are his pupils to his eyes. One, and two. There we go. So if you do an oops and you use um, an ink, you can cover any ink in Distress Oxide because Oxide will pop to the top layer. So there we go. These are black for the pupils. Or no, I did that wrong. These were supposed to be black for the pupils. Sorry, guys. That's okay. I'll show you what we'll do. Black for the pupils. It shows him there having bluey green eyes. So these are already black soot. I'm just going to come in and grab my um, chip sapphire 
and come over top of them and chip sapphire. There we go. And then I can take a tiny bit of speckled egg and I can just come in right like this. Not too worried, just, yep, that's all I need. Tiny, tiny bit of speckled egg. And I can come in like that. There we go. Perfect. Sorry guys, again, I'm right out of focus. So here they are, black soot and speckled egg for the eyes here. And then my little pupils that are actually black are right here. There we go. They're just teeny, teeny, tiny. Again, black soot. Give them a second little coat. There we go. Black soot. There, that's the three layers for his eyes. Then again, for his beak, I want some of the jack-o'-lantern, the orange. Yeah, shows his beaks like an orange color. And, I'm, and I did his eyes in the, the other part of the beak in gold. So I'll do this one in just a tiny bit. There we go. Yeah, this one. I want to get rid of that color. There we go. And pick that right up. There we go. So there's his beak. And here's this part. And then I can come in to one of these down here. Whoops. I flipped it over. See, they're so tiny. And then I can come in with a little bit of that candle, um, flickering candle. There we go. So I get something kind of in between. There. So now that I've kind of decorated most of my parts, I think I missed a couple here. Let me just quickly. There we go. And I'm not sure what these little ones are. So let's just do them. And then I have them if I need them. Before I wipe all of this up. There we go. So that's done. And um, so then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna back all this up. Aw, thanks, Tammy. And the great thing about using your glass media mat is you just add some water and clean up your mess. So it's wonderful, guys. Like the mess cleanup is so simple. Even after my Mixed Media Friday videos, 9 out of 10 times, my cleanup is less than 10 minutes. I think the most amount of it is having to um, wash all my stencils. But in terms of cleaning up the inks, it's so easy. You just, a little bit of water and it all comes nice and clean. There we go. Now... What we want to do is go back to our background. So as I mentioned, I kind of created mud just a little bit. So this is the great thing. We're now dry and we can add some more layers. So I want to add some more, um, I would say maybe some more orange and yellow at the top. So I'm going to go right into flickering candle. So I've got my blue there a bit. Or you know what? I think that part's okay. It's this part here in the middle that I'm not crazy about. See, that just takes me a few. Okay. So what I want to do, and this is a neat effect too, guys. I want to make something that's going to kind of look like trees. So it's just going to kind of... And then what I can do is come in with my water brush and just kind of kind of give it that illusion, maybe just a little bit. Just there we go. And it doesn't have to be. It just has to be subtle. Just.
just kind of yeah, same thing we just have one having to come up like this we can subtly see it so don't be afraid guys pick up your you know your water brushes and your um, paint brushes and you just add like little details of things and sometimes that just it just gives it that little something that it's missing and I want one right about here too just kind of and he's gonna cover it in the most part but then it's gonna just be like really subtle kind of com coming through on the one side there just like that and then I can add a little thicker in here so you don't really it just gives the illusion that there's all trees in here there and it just takes away from that what I had there before so again if you don't like something just you can change it and that's what I do, guys. And if I'm not happy with how something's turning out, um, you know, I don't scrap it. I just, you know, let's try something else. Let's add something else. Add a layer. And then I can have him sitting something like this. So I have my, my broomstick. So this one here. See, my crooked broomstick is the other one. So this is going to sit off my page just a little bit. And that's fine. And I can kind of figure out exactly see that that's neat here because that kind of looks like it's part of like a maybe like um like a shadow from my from my um my branch I think that's right let's see yeah showing it this way it's gonna go something like this Here we go. So we're still a little damp. And we're going to glue each of these little pieces together. Okay. And then we have Arthur who's going to sit the star of our show. Right about there. How awesome is that going to be, guys? I'm really happy with this. And I did this a little lighter so it kind of pops. And that's going to go something like this right here yep and that gives the layer right there and then this is going to go right in here right like that and then we have this one here which is going to go let me have a look at him right here that is cool and then we have this one here, which is going to go right there. So we wanted that to pop a little bit. And then we have this one here, which is going to go up here like that. So cool. See, he's starting to come together, guys. And this one here is going to go right in between here and here. Oh, I've got... That's a ladybug, actually. Like, what on earth kind of bug is that in my room? It's a ladybug. I don't know if you guys could see that on camera or not, but it flew, like, right by my face. It's like, oh my gosh. The joys of living in the country. There we go. There. Like that. And then his little feet are going to go um right like that so one and two like this just to kind of give you guys an idea and and i can kind of give myself an idea and then we have the details of his face so i think what i'm gonna do is just go ahead and grab my glue 
And now that I've kind of figured it sort of out, we can start piecing this together. It's probably my best bet. So I want to line everything up because I want to do this together, guys. So yeah, let's start out with, I'm happy with that. We'll get these down first. We're nice and dry here. I'm using my new Arc Glitter Glue. I finally ordered some, guys, and I'm really liking it. I find the bottle easier to squeeze, and I'm not fighting with it. So I do really like it, and I barely use anything. You just use a very small amount, and it goes a very long way. There. My pieces are still damp, so I'm just being gentle. And where did I figure? Yeah, right about here. Yeah, and that looks kind of like the shadows from the branch. And it doesn't matter that I'm going off my page, because he is the star of the show. Oh, did I? No, I've got something under there. Yep, his eyepieces. Okay, let's just pull those out. Carefully. Okay. And that slipped over there. Okay, here we go. And then we have this one with the crooked broomstick. Now we go that way. Here we go. Yep, right along here. Perfect. Right like that. And then we have Arthur. I'm going to grab his pieces here and just kind of set them aside so we sort of know what we're doing. Here we go. We're going to take him next. And you can do the same thing. You can ink them up with your distress inks, oxides, and um, or your sprays or um, the new um, mica stains from Tim Holtz. Or you can completely um, cover him in collage medium. And come in with your Distress Crayons. So there's so many options. I'm going to put him right in the center about here. So he looks like he's sitting right on that branch. There we go. Oh, a little bit of glue there. There we go. Now it's starting to come together, and I want to put this at the bottom first. Yeah, it shows right at the bottom here. And then this one goes right directly in between that. And I want to make sure that's going to fit right in there. So I'm sliding that right in. And lining it all up. There we go. Then the next piece is this one. Okay. Yep. right along here, oh, 
something like that. There we go. That's okay because this one's going to fit perfectly right in there. Right here. That fits right in here. And then this one goes on top. Right about here. Okay. Then this one. Goes. I think it's right here. Okay. a little bit of glue there whoops that's okay I can always come in with um, my paper towel here we go There we go. And then from here we'll put his feet down. Oops. Yeah, right there. I'm right here. There we go. And then there's little pieces for his claws, which are, yeah, one right here. So are not his claws, his little feet. And yeah, right here. Teeny tiny. And this is one here, and one over here. Oh, that way, I think. Yep, yeah, like that. And then this one here. one here and that one here there those are his little feet and then for his eyes and we have a we have it indented on here so we can actually see to line all of this up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Get his eyes, the base on with his beak. Shows it right. Yeah, right here. There we go. Perfect. I just want a tiny little bit on here. There we go. And 
And then we have this little piece of his hair here. There we go, right there. And then we have these look to go underneath his eyes. Yeah. And I'm even thinking they go, do they go one further down? Or do they go up one? Oh, maybe they go up one and I have to put them. Okay. So these tiny little ones here i'm gonna glue them gotcha and they go here on the inside so this part pops there we go On the inside right here there we go and then we have his eyes here there we go one And two, and then the little black. Very carefully. With the speckled egg. Just a tiny, tiny bit. Oops. There we go. Very carefully, if you guys can see. There we go. We're going to come right in here. Like that. And same with this one. A little higher, I think. Sorry, guys, my hands are a big mess. There we go. That's better. And you right at the top. So this is kind of like his iris, which is why we did it in the um, black soot with the speckled egg over top. There we go. Oh, right here. There we go. That's where that one sits. And then we have these little pieces here. Uh, where'd the other one go? With the, there's his beak. Is it on my hand? Nope. Here's one of them. Yeah, here's one with the pupil. Nope, the other one's beside me. Hold on. Okay. Here's one. That is really small. The people. There we go. They're like that. And of course the whole thing came off. There we go. Just move it. I'll have to touch that up. That's okay. I can do that with my brush after once the whole thing is dry. These are a little tacky. And damp. Covered in glue, covered in ink. There we go. And those are his little pupils on top of there.
just have to add some definition with the two colors. Then we have this little piece here, which is this hair. Here we go. And this goes up here. In this tiny little corner right there. There we go. And then we have his beak. So we have the big one underneath. And that goes right here. There we go. Now it's starting to look like Arthur. And then you have the smaller one, which goes over top. I gotta add more definition to his eyes. I wanna make his eyes um, like more of a bluey green. And then I want to add, um, that's better. There we go. There he is. And then we have this piece here, which goes along here to give that that accent. I'm overall impressed with this dye. And guys, I didn't need like um, any like instructions to put it together. I'm just looking at the picture of how it looks to go together. And the whole thing, if you guys can see on him, it kind of gives me that like a little bit of detail. So it shows, it kind of shows me where the pieces go. And now that he's together and I can kind of see him, I can go ahead with my water brush when the whole thing is dry and I can add more detail in. So I can separate the colors and add more things. So this is kind of the before, and then you guys will see the after. So basically, I'm going to, my background's great. I'm super happy with the background. Just him, he needs major touch-ups. So that's what I find. So this just gives you, like, your base, right? So this is how I like to do it. So then the only thing I have to worry about when I get him together is doing all his accents. So basically, I'm going to go ahead and add in, I think it goes, yeah, it goes like that. So I'm going to go ahead, and this is where he gets that grouchy look from, right here. There we go. That's looking more like Arthur. So I'm super happy with the purples. Just maybe lighten some stuff up, darken some other stuff up, give him some more contrast, I would think. And then um, I want his eyes, his eyes need better detail. But for the base, it's perfect. So that's just my recommendation. Just to get the, the perspective right on getting the dye together, I think it's just important. Base coat and getting his perspective right to put him together. And I guess that's with any of them, because some of them are very complex. I've noticed the colorized dyes. So just lots of patience, and I had some little, little ones extra. I wouldn't even worry about these little ones, guys, with the little details here and there. I can paint those on. I can use paints, I can use distress, or any old thing. So, generally speaking, that is a great base. And when it's dry, I can add in all kinds of further detail. So I'm really excited that I got to come live and share this with you guys. And play with my new Distress Mica, Mica Stains. It was a lot of fun. So again, guys, happy Halloween. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me tonight. And I'm sorry I didn't get to go live on Friday, because this is what I had planned for Friday. So here I am on Halloween, and it's super fun. So happy Halloween, everyone, and have a great night. And I will see you back on Wednesday. Good night, everyone. Bye.